Friends, you may have heard about GTT orders in Zerotha. So what are these orders? Let's figure out. So GTT means good till triggered. And these orders can be open for a one year duration. When is it useful? If you want to place a certain trade, but you do not want to track the market day in day out for this trade to be executed, you can place a long term order using GTT. And for the next one year, whenever your target price comes in, the stock in question could be sold or bought by Zerodha by auto triggering your order. Let me explain with a couple of easy examples. I own HDFC Bank over here, which is sitting at a neat profit of 25%. I think that if the price goes up to 1600 rupees, I would like to sell some of this. And on the other side, if the price goes down to 1400, I would like to buy some more. So this is my trigger for sell price and this is my target for a buy price. So I can do this. I can set an order in GTT such that, hey, if the price goes down, it will automatically buy at 1400 levels and it will automatically sell at 1600 levels to book some profit for me. And I can do this without having to track the market on a day to day basis. So I can place the orders today. It will be open for 365 days and auto triggered sent to the exchange. So let's place one of these orders today. Once I click HDFC bank, instead of the regular ad or exit, what I will do is I will click create GTT over here. Inside the GTT screen, you can first choose if it's a sell order or a buy order. So let me first show you the use case for buying. Once I click buy, the only option I have is to trigger a single order. OCO would be applicable in case of sell, which we will look at shortly. Now here's the thing. When you are looking to buy, Zerodha automatically assumes that you want to buy it at a price which is lower than the current market price. So if you see the current market price of 1500, Zerodha has by default said, okay, if the market falls 5%, maybe you want to buy this at 1437. But let's say my target is a little lower. I would go ahead and say, give me 1401. So my trigger price is 1401, which means whenever the price comes down to 1401, Zerodha will send this order to NSE. The order type is limit. This is a long term purchase that is cool as expected. The quantity that I want to purchase in this case, I am adding to my current lot. So I will say buy 25 quantity for me. And again, you would see an option for price. Why do we have two different prices over here? Please understand one of this is trigger. The other one is the price at which your order will be sent. Let's quickly understand how Zerodha and NNC work together to understand this. So here is the thing. CDSL holds my stocks. Zerodha is the broker who places my orders and NSC is the exchange where the actual transaction takes place. GTT is being set at a Zerodha level and Zerodha is being said, hey, please watch the market for me. And whenever my target price comes up over here, the market has reached my target price, send my order to NSE. So at what point should Zerodha send my order to NSE? Trigger is that point. By saying what is the trigger, we are saying, hey, Zerodha, at this point, at this price, you should send my order to NSC. But at what price will Zerodha ask NSC to transact? That price has to be defined here. And of course, it has to be correlated to this trigger price. So over here, if I am looking to buy, which means that the market was at 1410, then it went down to 1405 and it kept going down and it has now just hit 1401. So at this point, Zerodha will send my order, which means the price has been coming down from 1410 or so anything above 1401, which also means that the price has not yet hit 1400 or lower to make sure that my order, once it is sent to NSC, it is triggered, it is fulfilled. I would ideally place a price which is a little higher than 1401 so that if 1401 was just a very temporary price with very low volumes, my order should not get stuck at NSE. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to select 1402 as my price. So once the price is 1401, I will place a buy order at 1402 rupees. That is what I have configured over here. So during a buy order, your price at which 
this order will be transacted at NSC will be higher than your trigger price. Also note at NSC end, this will be a day order. So for any reason, this if this order is triggered, but not fulfilled at NSC end at this price, you will not be able or your order will then be removed from the GTT list of Zerodha because it's already sent to the exchange. And that is why this order type is called trigger, good till triggered. Zerodha's responsibility ends once they have triggered the order, once it hits this price. The fulfillment at this price, whatever you set it, is at the NSE end. Now these transactions will get a little complicated when we look at the sell side because there are a little more options. So if we say create GTT, again say for HDFC bank, and this time I'm going to say, okay, let's look at sell transaction. In sell, there are two types of triggers, single and OCO. OCO means one cancels the other, which means you will place two orders. One, any one order which is triggered will automatically cancel the second trigger. Now we are not going to look at OCO. Now before we look at OCO, first let's look at the simple single order over here. If I want to book profits in HDFC bank, for my long term HDFC bank holding, I am selecting a sell order, a single order. And in this case, Zerodha, of course, is suggesting, hey, the price which you trigger, the price at which you trigger a sell transaction has to be greater than today's market price and has to be significantly greater. Otherwise, no point placing a GTT order. So what I'm going to say that, hey, why don't you sell some of my HDFC at 16 or 5 rupee or at least trigger my order at this. Let me select the quantity for profit booking. I would say 25 stocks again. And I now need to put a price over here. Now, when we are selling, please understand what's happening in the market. The market price is going up. So it's at 15, 13 today. It goes up to 1600. The moment it hits 16 or 5, my order is sent to NSE, which means the highest price known to Zerodha is 16.05. If I want to definitely sell, I should be slightly lower than 16.05. I could be just 10 paise lower. I could just say, make it 16.04.90. That's fine. But I have to be lower than 16.05. I also suspect if I try to do more than 16.05, Zerodha might give me an error. Let me see that. It seems Zerodha does not mind me doing this. But if I want my order to be triggered and also completed, I would do something like this, that, hey, I will be at 1604.50. It's not a big difference for this kind of a quantity. So here, here we go. My trigger price, my order type limit, long term, 6.06% higher than market price is ready to be scheduled with GTT. All I need to do is slide this button over here. If I go to my orders, I can go inside GTT and look at both my HDFC orders over here. In fact, I've only placed one. So you can look at my HDFC order over here. So my HDFC order is being tracked over here. I can see my trigger price and last traded price over here for convenience. If I want to cancel this order, I can just click delete. But now let's look at the more complicated use case, which is one cancels the other. So once I click GTT within cell, I have now selected one cancels the other. This is a kind of a cover order, which basically says that, hey, the current market price is 13 rupees and 25 paise. If the price starts to fall, I will trigger a stop loss for you. If the price starts to go up, I will book profits for you. So I can basically program this order to be such that, hey, at 1450 rupees, please trigger my stop loss. And at 1575, please book some profit for me. So let's see how this can be done. So over here, you can see one trigger is for stop loss. The other one, the target is for profit booking. For stop loss, I would say, okay, the current price is 1513. Let me say at 1444, I want to book certain loss. I want to clear, trigger a stop loss. Quantity again needs to be defined over here. I will define the quantity as 25. My current holding is 156 stock. So 25 will go through and I need to set a price over here. Now, if you are 
triggering a stop loss, you better sell at a price which is slightly lower than your trigger because the market is apparently falling. So I generally place it at one rupee less in stocks which are of this magnitude. So 1444 is my trigger, 1443 is the price at which I am sending my order to the exchange to book my stop loss. But at the same time, I'm also setting a target and the target is 1575. And in case of target, as we remember, I will sell it at 1574. So the price is going up to 1575. I'm selling it just under the current market price at that point of time. Now here is what Zerodha will do for me. Zerodha knows that, hey, this is me. I am someone who does not want to track the market day to day. If the price goes down, they will trigger this stop loss for me. If the price goes up, they will trigger this profit booking for me. And whenever either of these are triggered, the other one will be cancelled. So what this means is if the price goes up and this order gets triggered, then the other order will automatically, the other GTT order will automatically cancel. And if the stop loss is triggered first, then my target order will be cancelled. This is as simple as it is. There is one more thing about GTT that I want to tell you. These days, a lot of DMAT accounts require a T-PIN for any transaction to be done. Why does this happen? As I told you before, our stocks are with CDSL and for Zerodha to access them, now a T-PIN requirement has come in. I have an older Zerodha account here. So there is something called a power of authority or power of attorney, which Zerodha has on my stocks and T-PIN is not required. But if this order has to be triggered after say 10 days or 15 days, the T-PIN is valid only for 24 hours or one trading session. So Zerodha will again need a T-PIN for my order to be executed. So you will see notifications from Zerodha to put in a T-PIN so that your orders under GTT are not rejected or are unable to be sent to the exchange because CDSL did not release the stocks for Zerodha to transact on them. So that is a friction with GTT which you have to bear in mind. Do remember when you are placing your GTT order, maybe Zerodha will give you a, an additional option to move these stocks to a pool account as we saw with the Upstocks GTT feature. But I really find Zerodha GTT feature to be very well built. It's meant for long term buy and sell and it's not unnecessarily complicated like some other apps which we have seen. So what do you think about GTT? What do you think about this video? Please comment and let me know. I will see you folks next time.